Hello, Facebook friends and, and all my friends out there at the nursing home. And so excited about sharing with you guys this message today. Uh, just, you know, <clears throat> sometimes getting over the hump is all about enthusiasm, passion. And, and, and today we're going to start a sermon series. So excited about this sermon series. Uh, the name of the sermon is Fire for Desire. Hey man, let me say that again. Fire for desire. You know, God is on the move, amen. And there's there's so many things going on in our lives. And whether it be struggles, trials, disappointments, discouragements, blessings, uh, all these good, positive things that might be coming our way, whatever, it doesn't matter whether you're on the top of the hill or you're down in the valley. I'm going to tell you, God is on the move. He is wanting to light a fire within you and you and me for desire. For desire for what? Desire for Him. Desire for His truth. Desire for love and the joy, and the peace, and the patience, and the kindness, and the gentleness, and the faithfulness, and the goodness, and self-control. He's, he's asking for us to, to want Him, and yet we're asking, Lord, light a fire within my soul. And today we're going to start a sermon series. I'm going to get down into some principles, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that these principles I pull out of the Scriptures will just stir inside of you. You're going to say, man, I never, I never thought about that before. And then you're going to pray, Lord, ignite a fire in me. And you're going to see life pour out inside your soul from your inner bones. God is going to ignite you. And then you are going to pass that fire to others around you. It's going to be so contagious that we're going to have a wildfire here in 2020 like never before. Amen. That's my prayer for you as you go through this series. So this will be a two or three part series. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a three part yet or not. I know it's two part, but it may be a three part, but we'll see as we go through it. But let me go ahead and dive right in with some uh, prayer, and then we're going to jump right into the truth. Okay, Lord, we just love you. And I thank you so much for all those out there who, who watch these videos, Lord. I ask, Lord, that they know that these videos have a purpose. These messages have a purpose. And that is to draw people unto you, Lord. I have no will in my heart or in my bones to do anything other than that. And I ask, Lord, that you would use me as a mouthpiece. Speak through me, Lord. Give understanding to those who are listening, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you would be glorified through it all. We love you, thank you, and praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Okay, here we go. We're going to be, again, the title is Fire for Desire. We're going to be in two primary scriptures. We're going to be in some other places, but we're going to be in two primary scriptures. And the first one we're going to be at is 1 Timothy 1 6. That's 1 Timothy 1 6. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read that to us. And basically, verse 6 says, I'm writing to encourage you to fan into a flame and rekindle the fire. Let me say that again. Fan, fan into a flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands upon you. So the writer, Paul, is talking about a time when, when the people, he laid his hands upon them and he prayed and God, God started a fire. And then when Paul left, he hears that the fire's dwindling down and, and there's not much flame anymore. And Paul's saying, rekindle the flame. Let me read to you another scripture here in, in Jeremiah 29. I love this so much. It says, His word burns in my heart like fire. It's like a fire in my bones, explanation point. I am worn out trying to hold it in, explanation point. I can't do it, 
Explanation point. Jeremiah is saying, this, this word is like a fire within my bones. I can't hold it back. I just can't do it. This is a word. This is truth. This is joy. This is hope. Now, Jeremiah had to share this word that wasn't necessarily positive for the people around him because God was, was using Jeremiah to bring judgment. But yet, Jeremiah, being the man of God, couldn't hold back from the fire God had put in him to deliver the message. And my, my, present, my joy to you today, my present being here today, is to bring a message to you from the Lord. God has lit a fire within my bones to encourage you, to tell you to never give up, to fight the fight. When the enemy comes at you and he attacks and he pours water on your fire, you get the wood out and the charcoal starter and you rekindle that baby. You hear me? And, and let God take over in your life, in all areas of your life. I want to take a few minutes here and I wanna, I wanna give you some facts about a fire, okay? When we think about the title, Fire for Desire, let's, let's learn some facts today about a fire. <clears throat> Here's some truths that we know about a fire. Is a fire, it is, it is consuming, burning, bright, and hot. Okay? When you think of fire, you can describe its description in that way. Now, when we think about spiritual fire, when we think about taking that physical flame and we acknowledge a uh, spiritual fire, I want you to pay attention to what the physical fire does is it shapes things. You can actually take fire and you can shape something with it. You can refine something with it. You can purify something with it. You can consume something with it. You can heat something with it and you can use it for light. We have done that from time to time with the fire, with a campfire. We've done almost every one of those with. And But I want you to connect this to the spiritual ram. And I want you to think about fire and I wanted you to think about these things. When someone acknowledges that God has lit in a fire in their soul, in the inner part of their bones, we basically what's happened is we've asked, we're asking here, God, if you're going to light a fire for desire in us, we're asking God to set a fire down in our soul this means we let him light a burning flame that consumes all of who I am from the inside out, from the inside out. So important. I can't tell you how many brush files that I've, they got damp and I didn't have the right chemical to try to light the brush file. And I would take a charcoal starter and I would, I would put it around the edge side, but because it was moist on the inside, because I didn't have the right structure to burn it would light for a minute and then it would burn out and it wasn't until i i had the right chemical reaction within that flame for it to really take off i want to ask you something i want to ask you something have you ever let god take you through the refinery have you ever let god purify who you are as a believer have you ever let God consume you with his love like never before? Where even in a hateful thought, even in the midst of unforgiveness, all you could do is love. Have you ever done that before? Have you ever allowed God to light a bright fire before your path that lights up the whole area? Have you ever done that? I want to invite you in this teaching to come alongside me and allow God to light a fire within your soul. Amen. To light a fire within your soul. Now, I want to ask you something here, too, is sometimes we take the fire and we understand it in the physical realm. But I'm hoping that I can break down a few things and, and ask, ask maybe a few questions and give you some answers here in this teaching to help you understand how to compare the physical fire with the spiritual fire. This is what God gives us. There's a word ardor, which means passion, love, enthusiasm, zeal, eagerness, and devotion. 
I mean, let's just all admit it. If Brother Wayne was here today, and all I could say to you is, have you heard about a fire? You know, these things are hot. They're bright. But you know, I suppose that's not the way I'm going to deliver a fire to you. I'm going to say, come on, hear what I got to say about the fire. I'm passionate about God lighting a spirit within us, a light within us, consuming us with his love. Amen. You see, this is enthusiasm. This is, this is contagious. Nobody gets contagious about a down and out thought. Oh, humbug. No, that's not us. That's not us who are lit on fire for God. We're passionate. We're enthusiastic about it. We have this, this, this working inside of us that even though it's hard, even though there's a pandemic, even though there's all kinds of things, we're constantly thinking, God, how do you use us to bring life and light to others around us? Check this out. I thought this was really cool. As God was giving me this message, I went on to think of the the four elements that light a physical fire. And any of you that have been through science, you, you'll know this, is there's four elements you need, okay? Number one, you need oxygen. If you're gonna light a fire, you gotta have oxygen. Number two, you gotta have some sort of heat. And number three, you gotta have fuel. And the fourth thing that happens is a chemical reaction. If if you don't have a chemical reaction with these three sources, then you'll never happen. What I mean by chemical reaction is you take the oxygen, you take the heat, and you take the fuel, and you put the right mixture together. You put them together, and then when it's right, it creates a chemical reaction, which creates a fire. And today, I want to take you through a spiritual, I want to take you through the spiritual elements of the Christian for a fire to ignite within you, you've got to hear what I have to tell you today. And I'm going to tell you something that this is going to really, really touch you. I really believe it is. I believe you're going to, you're going to hear what I'm fixing to tell you. And you're going to say, I've never heard that before. This is amazing. I'm excited about this truth. And, and God's going to do something within you. The first thing we're going to talk about is the first element. And that is the oxygen. Okay. Now, oxygen is very, very important, but there's a lot of things about oxygen, but I want you to think of the two things about oxygen. Number one is oxygen is very important. Without oxygen, there could be no fire. And number two is that the oxygen must be pure. It can't be polluted. It can't be, it can't be something that's not clean oxygen because otherwise it will not perform. It won't work. Try taking an oxygen bottle that's not pure oxygen, mixing it with other junk, and then trying to inhale it. It won't work. So, so here's what we know, is I believe the only pure thing that we can call oxygen is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is pure. As we learn in Galatians 5.20, the fruit of the Spirit, the identification, the character of the Spirit of God is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. I mean, these there's nothing unpure about that. Those are all pure, good things that we only strive to be like. This is the Holy Spirit. And I tell you today that I believe the Holy Spirit is the oxygen. It is the, bre the breath within inside of us. And unless we have that breath, we cannot have a fire ignited within us. We need him. And, and 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, he, our body is God's temple and his spirit lives in us. And he breathes through us. He's our counselor. He's our comforter. He's our helper. Let me move on to the second element. The second element is heat. You know, I remember as a kid uh, camping, and, and I never could do this, but I remember mom showing me, uh, she would take, you would take two sticks, and you would rub them together like this, and if you do it long enough between some rocks or something, it would start a heat, and some smoke would happen. You rub that heat, that friction. 
And then that's the element to maybe if you have fuel and you have, you have uh, oxygen, you can, you can have a chemical reaction. I never could make that happen. I remember getting it really hot, but never really getting enough heat. But I want to share with you something. I believe in the spiritual realm. I believe that heat is faith. It's faith. Let me read to you some things about faith. You know, we know for sure that without faith, we cannot please God. God tells us that it's only by faith that we can please him. And I believe that faith comes attached to a few things. If we were to identify spiritual faith, we could say that is having confidence in God, having trust in God, having reliance in God, being having humility in God. All these things coming together create this faith that's genuine and authentic for God. And this is the heat that we got to have to have the fire. We got to have the oxygen as the Holy Spirit. And then we got to have the heat, which is the faith. The faith. And you know, let me say something to you. Many people think that they got to have a lot of faith. But the scripture teaches us we only need faith as big as a mustard seed. That's a, that's, if you can see between my fingers, that little hole, that's faith. All we need is faith that big. And if we can get faith that big, then we can move mountains. So really, all we need is a little bit of faith in what? In a real big God. Amen. Faith in a real big God. And God's wanting to give us that heat. We need that heat. We have to believe without a doubt. And then the third chemical or the third element to the fire that is relevant for this discussion today is the fuel. And some of you are going to be like, man, I never heard that before. But you know what? Fuel is needed. Try driving your car without gasoline. Does it go anywhere? No. Well, let me tell you about this spiritual body is I believe the fuel can be known spiritually as the word of God. If I don't have the fuel, if I don't have the fuel in my mind, in my heart, pondering on it daily, then how can I ever expect to have a fire? How can I ever expect God to ignite a fire? Now, let me show you to share this with you as we break this down is you have, you have oxygen, the Holy Spirit. You have heat, faith. And then you have fuel, the Word of God. Now here's, can you take one of those elements and light a fire? No, you can't. You have to, God has to have all three together. As a matter of fact, you have to be born again. When you're born again, God's Spirit comes and lives in you. There it is. There's your oxygen. Okay, but then the walk comes where you've got to be intentional to to have the faith because there's many believers that even though they're born again and they have been saved don't mean they have faith, not the faith that comes from a walk with God. And when you have that faith and you pour the word of God, you take you take the Holy Spirit, you take you take the uh, the faith and then you take the word of God and you put them all in here and you stir it up. Here comes the chemical reaction. And then when it gets right, whoo, God ignites a fire within you, within me. Beloved, as I close, would you join with me? Would you, would you ask God to light a fire? Would you, would, you, would you draw to the Holy Spirit so he can draw near to you? Have the faith to believe and stir in the word of God and let God ignite a chemical reaction that gives you a desire for him like never before. Beloved, I believe you can. I pray you can. And I ask you to join with me as we prepare for the next decade to bring change not change in something people have never seen, but we got to go back to the roots of what the fire of God's all about. It's about the love. It's about, it's about passion. It's about being intentional. And I'm telling you, God's looking for you to stand up to the challenge. And all you got to do is be serious about getting that chemical reaction. All three of those elements stirred up in front of you so God can light a fire within your bones. Amen. Thank you all. I appreciate you. Don't, don't forget next week, 
we'll be continuing this series. So excited about it. We're going to talk more of why God gives fires and, and when he gives the fires, what it's for. And that's for the desires. We're going to talk more about that next time. God bless you. Love you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.